People all over the world go online to get their fix of video games. But when a group of young gaming enthusiasts got together in early 2010 to create a new video game set in Kenya called Mathri Racer, they surely had no idea how many hundreds of thousands of people would get addicted. Let's take a look and see. Kanini, what are you playing? Come on, quit lazing around. Can I play? Ugh, it's called the three racer. Look, look, this is so cool. You have to dodge all the obstacles without crashing. Like the lorry, the motorcycle guy, and the, all the cars. Ugh. Oh, here are the truck, the truck, the truck. Ugh. There's another one on that side. Ah, oh, you suck. And you are calling me a loser. My three racer tearing up the tarmac on a phone near you. Are we done yet? Yeah, I think so. Didn't Dad seem he was gonna pay us for this? Yeah, I hope he sells a lot of coffee for so he pays us. That's uh, it. Huh? <laughs> you want like some life? Okay. You have no life. <laughs> and with that infectious laughter, I introduce our new panel. It uh, consists of uh, Kaburo Kovia. Kaburo Kovia is the project manager for local digital content at the Kenya ICT board, where she's responsible for giving seed capital to tech entrepreneurs getting creatives better access to trade opportunities and helping to create Kenya's Open Data Initiative. Maura Kirore is the creative director at Planet Rackus, the company that launched Mathri Racer, which you've just seen, just over a year ago, who didn't anticipate that they'd get over 600,000 downloads in the first four months and went on to win a Pivot East Prize this year. Last but by no means least is Okwi Oko, who is co-founder of the Kweli Media Network, which uses the power of the internet to showcase the paradigm shifting things that Africans do every day through multimedia content that can, everyone can access online for free. Okwi, yeah. over to you. Thanks a lot, John. I mean, uh, we'll get right to it. Uh, Africa is getting more and more connected. I mean, by the time your full-blooded African senior citizen is there trying to follow their kid on Twitter, you know the, you know the gig is up. Um, but how can we translate that into real business opportunities? Uh, Maura and I will try to be chivalrous and let you go first, uh, oh. Kabura. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, how to turn that into business opportunities? Uh, well, one of the things we really need to do is start connecting people. I guess the internet is one thing that connects people. But how can we get the people who are software developers who understand the technology and the people who have the problems and also understand what solutions they might want together so that you start building um, products that are relevant in the market? So a lot of that is going on. There's a lot of development in, in the software development. Um, um, in technology, there are a lot of problems. We have a lot of uh, issues here in Kenya and in Africa that need solutions. So I think one of the ways to just really catalyze, catalyze that is how can we make sure that the people who can build the technology and the people who understand the problems and the solutions come together. I think that's where we can really have an impact. Mm. Um, I think it's, a, it's an interesting question. Um, it's, it's odd for me to be sitting in and be termed as a, a digital entrepreneur, but I think uh, the bigger opportunity is to look at what kind of passion drives you and then to leverage the technology that's out there in order to get your voice heard. Um, we started off from the basic premise that there, were no, there was no digital entertainment that's specifically targeted as, at Africans. Um, we, we just did a, a little survey and we looked at how many gaming companies there are in Africa. Uh, in sub-Saharan Africa, I think there's a sum total of two. Uh, if you look at uh, countries like uh, Europe and Asia, there are over 200. In, in the United States, there's like 300. Um, in South America, 
probably about 190. So in terms of opportunity, um, I'd say the opportunity is, is, is there. Um, there's never been a time and point in history where all the conditions are ripe for people who have stories to tell. Um, the tools are there if, if you just take advantage of them. So um, I think it, the onus is on, on us as creators uh, or as, um, or as uh, content creators to take advantage of these tools and, and, and put our voices out there instead of letting people uh, present our point of view and us consuming that point of view. Because that's, that's been part of the problem that we're trying to address with Quelly, the stories that we tell. Just even recognizing that that opportunity is there, that there are people on the African continent who, who will consume that product that you're developing, just like we're, we're talking about. It's not this big dark continent where nobody does anything. There's actually tangible business opportunities for people to sort of sit up and take advantage of, right? Exactly. Okay, so then what do you do? What, how should startups leverage the power of the internet? What should they do to take full advantage of its power? Well, actually, you raise a good point. You know, a lot of the times we're also looking for markets out there, or you think I need to develop a product for audiences that uh, have sophisticated technology, but we have great audiences right here. Even in Eastern Africa, our region is fast growing. I think Africa has the top three fastest growing economies. So if we start looking at our markets in Kenya, in the region, and in Africa, there's a lot of opportunity already right there. Um, I've just spent the last week talking to, last month actually, um, holding a lot of events with uh, creative uh, content producers and actually people in the creative industry, let's say, uh, crafters and, and even here with painters and sculptors. And it was really interesting, they understood there was an opportunity for them online, not even just to sell to people abroad, but even within the region, but they felt they didn't have the time or really the skills or courage or, or confidence uh, in order to do it. So there's a great opportunity there to, um, uh, to bridge the gap. So people, are, they have wonderful products, they, they know their audiences and how to reach them, they might be online, but they don't have the time or the skills uh, to build their presence online. So I think there's a gap there, there's, and yet we have the skills, we have lots of wonderful people who understand technology, how to speak to Kenyans or Africans using social media. So again, there's a bit of a gap there where there's uh, people with products, and um, what we need to do maybe is build the value chain a lot better so that people with products can concentrate on, say, developing characters, and then there's other people who can come in to then make sure those characters have reached their audiences. Um, so there's, yeah, a bit of a gap there and an opportunity. Okay. Actually, it's, it's actually quite simple. Uh, you just need to get off your ass. <laughs> um, basically, um, to be honest, we, we started this idea. It, it's an idea that had been languishing in my head for many years, but I couldn't have done it if I had not met an extremely talented group of people with different skill sets. Um, again, it's about networking. If you have a great idea, but you're not a developer, there's great places where you can meet guys who can bring your idea to life. There's the iHub. Uh, there's initiatives that the ICT board um, is, is undertaking to bring together creators and developers and create these networks where people with different skill sets can come together and create these amazing applications. Um, you know, I, I met most of, a lot of the guys that uh, I created the game with are guys that I, I linked up with at different uh, events. Uh, we work remotely. Um, you know, it's something we did over weekends in coffee shops. Um, you know, in yeah. my backyard and stuff like that. So yeah. the constraint is, you know, whatever you, you put on, your, on yourself. The video yeah. we shot in two hours, <laughs> you know. It's not as good as the Ericsson one, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're working on that. Yeah. So I basically, mean, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. I yeah. mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of the people we do stories about at Quelly are very simple people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I worked in the media. I know we sort of show up after you've made it. Now that you're famous is when we rock up and we're like, you know, can we do a story about you? But we've sort of tried to force ourselves to find these people who are doing these things before, before they move to the next level as an encouragement. And it's like you say, you just need to get going. Yeah, right? you just need to get going. Okay. And during the course of the journey, you learn more stuff. You know, you learn about, uh, you know, we had no idea how to make a game. So we just start from scratch, educating ourselves uh, online, talking to other people, going for talks. and 
uh, downloading a hell of a lot of uh, material from, you know, from different websites, and uh, soon you realize that you need a lawyer, <laughs> an accountant, <laughs> Uh, you know, then then you're 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 getting sued by people who think that they they uh, own they own your idea and things like that. So it's it's a it's a journey, but you have to start. That's the key thing. If you have a good idea, get it out there quickly. Fail fast. Uh, yeah. You know, you put okay. in your ten thousand hours. Okay. Let me let me ask you guys now to to give them a true taste of Africa. Get out your curry shells and everything. What is the future? Oh, what the do you future. see coming? What's next? Um, what I'm really excited about right now, uh, right now is the opportunity for um, developing technology and devices, uh, software and devices kind of things. So a lot of the concentration in the last few years has been on mobile apps and maybe even and web apps and the mobile web, which is fantastic. Uh, but there was an article that came out, um, I think it was earlier this year, saying, you know, in ICTs, it's not just about mobile and web apps. How can we go beyond that? And um, this year in the competitions and, and, uh, that we've been, I've been going to, I've been beginning to see this innovation of taking devices and creating software and technology and doing fabrication type of thing, changing a device that you know, bringing some technology into it and changing it to something that makes a lot more, um, that makes sense for the community that you're developing for. So that's what's really exciting me right now and I hope people will continue to be really innovative in that way, take the power of mobile technology, the tools that we have here um, in Kenya and create new fabulous products. Um, I can honestly say I'm probably very excited about the next version of uh, Ma3 Racer. Look out for it next, early next year. Um, it'll be much improved. Uh, we've, we've interacted, we've gotten a lot of feedback from people who are playing it, and it's, it's really exciting. We're playing around with some new technology, and it'll be available across all platforms, Android, iPhone, and uh, Nokia, and PC. Um, in terms of the future, I think what, what's, what excites me is uh, getting to that point, that tipping point where Kenya can actually become like a gaming hub, uh, gaming and technology hub, and not just, um, I mean, it's exciting to win awards and everything, but I think the, the big opportunity is to create an industry that can sustain itself, um, not be grant driven, but actually sustain itself and create exciting opportunities for for all these young kids coming up, and you know, um, I think uh, for us, it's it's really exciting to be a part of that future. Okay, great. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.